Good morning all, I am Inspector Valentin. It is believed last night that the famous criminal Hercule Flambeau has arrived in England. Interpol agents have been tracking him since we laid eyes on him in Ghent and have followed him across the Netherlands. However, he eluded our agents at the docks of Dieppe and we have not seen him since. He is believed to be heading for London and we should be getting confirmation very soon from Dockside CCTV if he has arrived. It goes without saying that this is one of the most accomplished criminals in the world. The FBI have been pursuing him for over a decade. He is responsible for, amongst other things, the stealing of the famous Mazar al Ken diamond from the Sultan of Brunei, a Winslow Homer painting from the US, and the gilded cross of St. Michael from the Vatican's collection. Flambeau is unique, as shown from the details of every crime that we are aware of. He chooses not to kill. People have been found tied up or gassed, but never murdered. However, this does not mean that you should drop your guard. Just because he hasn't killed yet doesn't mean he won't be desperate enough to do so. So if you do see him, approach with extreme caution. Yes, Sergeant Gale. Inspector, what does he look like? There are very few details given on any of his attributes. Surprisingly, given the high-profile nature of the thefts involved, we have made very little progress in determining many of his physical attributes. CCTV has never caught any of his facial details. He wears a device that can block camera signals. However, from watching any footage where he appears and eyewitness reports, we have concluded that he is a male Caucasian over six foot tall. While that description fits a great many people across the world, it is the most comprehensive description we've managed to piece together. He is also highly adept at disguises. He has been known to use a wide range of items, such as fake hairstyles, makeup, and even on occasion latex masks. Combining this with his ability to blend into a crowd, he is a notoriously difficult individual to track down. Indeed, the only reason we know he committed half of these crimes is due to the Scrabble tile he leaves at the scene of the crime. And yes, it's an F. <laughs> One thing before you all go. It is of personal pride of Scotland Yard to catch Flambeau. Many organisations have tried to catch him and failed. But now he is in our playground, it is imperative that he doesn't get away. That's all. Dismissed. Inspector, this was just announced on BBC News. And now we stream live to Westminster Abbey, with an announcement that to celebrate Pope Francis's visit to the UK, the famous Blue Cross will be displayed as a symbol of celebration at the pontiff's visit. The Blue Cross is supposedly over 800 years old and is inlaid with blue sapphires, making it one of the most expensive pieces of Catholic iconoclasm in the world. I think we now have Flambeau's target. It's big, it's public, it's perfect for a thief of his calibre. My question is, why have we not been informed about its value? Surely some sort of protection is needed for such an expensive item. Inspector, we weren't informed because the church didn't want to make too much of a spectacle of it. Not until they could be sure that it was safely on its way to London. They couldn't be sure the news wouldn't leak to Flambeau. Well, find me who they sent to bring the Blue Cross to Westminster Abbey. And do it quickly! Yes, Inspector. Right away, Inspector. How am I supposed to find this cross? Flambeau has almost certainly caught wind of it by now. That's probably why he was heading to London. And the church neglected to tell us this information? Now I'm stuck talking to myself while we play catch-up against one of the world's greatest criminals. Inspector, I have the news you requested. I rang St Michael's Church and they have informed me that a Father Brown is bringing the cross to Westminster Abbey. His secretary, a Miss Wren, has told me that he caught the train to Liverpool Street at 2.53 and is inspected in at 4.10. He is then taking the tube to Westminster Abbey. Meanwhile, the church has arranged a dummy van to travel to London to throw suspects off the scent of the cross. But she says you can't call him. He doesn't own a mobile. Oh, and she wants us to let her know when we found him. Poor woman. I think I scared her a bit. The time now is 3.54. We'll make it to Liverpool Street in time. But if he is taking the tube to Westminster Abbey... 
Right, Gail. We will deal with this the old-fashioned way. Look at the map. He can take the circle line from Liverpool Street all the way to Westminster. So we can catch the same train as him if we rendezvous with him at Aldgate Station. Tube gets in there at Liverpool Street at 4.13, reaches Aldgate at 4.16. It's tight, but we can get to Aldgate Station in that time and stay with Father Brown until he reaches Westminster. Shall I send police to meet the father at Liverpool Station? Hmm. No. The church has asked for secrecy on the matter. We had better oblige them. And we don't want to spook Flambeau too soon. If we lose him, we might not get another chance. We will both travel to Algate, and if we find Flambeau, we can call for backup. Put police at every tube stop on the line if we have to. Now, Sergeant, we have to go! Excuse me, has the 413 from Liverpool Station got in yet? You are in luck, delayed by a minute, so if you hurry... Thanks. Let's go. Split up. You enter one side of the train and I'll find the other. Call as soon as you know you've found the priest. Don't make contact with him at all. We don't want to draw attention to ourselves. Ring as soon as you see him, okay? Yes, Inspector. This train terminates at... Found the priest yet, Sergeant? No, Inspector. I've got on the back carriage and have discreetly asked the train conductor whether he's seen a priest. He said he's seen two men in black walk on the train, both with crucifixes around their neck. At least we know who's on the train. We shall just have to keep searching. I'm on to the next carriage. Same here. No priest in here, Inspector. There don't seem to be many shifty-looking people around here. Just your average set of commuters, really. Shh! I found them. Carriage three. Call for backup at Westminster Station. I'm not letting them out of my sight. There are two priests. One's average height and a bit corpulent. The other is tall and thin. One of them is holding two packages, both wrapped in brown paper. Almost identical packages at that. On the other side of the carriage, Inspector. He won't slip away from us. Good. But what is he talking about with that other priest? I'll ring back in a minute, Gail. I'm travelling today as I have been entrusted to take an object of significant spiritual worth to London. Hence the two boxes I have. It is rather rare I get to travel for my work. Most of the time I spend tending to the needs of my flock. If I were you, Father, I'd be careful what you talk about, especially in crowded places. You never know who might be listening. Ah, thank you, Madam. Hopefully I haven't said too much. Thank you, sir, for reminding the Father here that church business is best kept within church walls. Father Brown is a rather talkative man. No worries, just trying to help. And who might you be? I'm Father Jurok of St Agnes's Church. What's your name? I'm Sophie. Sophie Nesbitt. Nice to meet you, Sophie, but I'm afraid this is our stop. Goodbye. Inspector, are you with them? I've lost sight of the priest amongst the crowd. Damn, I can't see them. I've lost track as well. They've slipped away. I've seen the priest. They are heading towards the exits. They are some way ahead. How did they get past us? I see. I'll try and cut them off before they escape. They've got out of the station. I've lost sight of them again. Where are the men who are supposed to be on the lookout outside the station? I can't see anybody. If they've escaped, there's going to be hell to pay. Inspector Valentin, is it just this exit that needs covering? Or would you like us to put an officer on every platform? They've gone. We lost sight of them near the exit. What took you so long? Sorry, sir. Traffic accident on the bridge, and a tourist had a heart attack in front of us. We had to stay and help administer medical aid until an ambulance arrived. Damn. Well, I suppose you'd better call his housekeeper and tell her that we've seen the father, even if he has eluded us for now. Right away. Inspector, we've got a problem. 
Apart from the obvious, Sergeant, what might that be? Miss Wren has never heard of a Father Duroc. I pressed her about it, especially as the father seemed to have met the man before, but she was adamant that she had never heard of him. Of course. Of course. How could I have been so stupid? Flambeau. The other priest is Flambeau. You believe he'd really be that brazen, sir? I mean, to steal it, yes, but it's not really a challenge to rob a priest, is it? No, but think about it. That box containing the cross is going to be next opened in front of the Pope. The box will be empty, bar one of his famous F tiles. Everyone will assume that he stole it from Westminster, where it would have been under heavy guard, thereby increasing his reputation and adding to the legend of his name. It was staring at us right in the face as well. Sergeant, would you say the other priest was over six foot tall? Why yes, he was, but we didn't have positive identification on Brown at the time, and by the time he had introduced himself, he had already established that he knew Father Duroc, which removed any suspicion that he was Flambeau. Exactly. That and the name he gave. Duroc. I'll need to double check, but in one of the early crimes that we attributed to Flambeau, the police interviewed a cleaner who had been working at Avignon Cathedral when Lady Montague's necklace was stolen. He was never charged, but he gave his name as H. Duroc. I bet the contents of my cigarette packet that that's his real name. Duroc. Now all we have to do is work out a plan to find Father Brown and the Blue Cross. Speaking of a cigarette, before we head back to the office. Do you want a cigarette, Sergeant? Thanks, Inspector. I'll join you this time. Inspector, there's a scrunched up bit of paper in this box. Weighed pretty tightly by the looks of it, I'd say. It has a phone number on it. Nothing else, just a phone number. Give it here. I'll ring it. Hello. You have reached the Flaming Tree, an Indian restaurant and bar located on Cadogan Lane, Belgravia. Press 1 to book a table. Press 2 to speak to one of our waiters. Any luck, Inspector? Some fool gave me a number to an Indian restaurant. I have no idea why. Evidence of wrongdoing, perhaps? But why? We didn't identify ourselves as police officers at any point on the train. Not to anyone. The only time we could have been identified would have been after we lost Father Brown and Flambeau at Westminster Station. Saying that, Flambeau could have recognised us. I'm sure a man of his criminal talents can spot an undercover policeman. Then why give us a phone number? A wild goose chase? I'm afraid I can't help you there, Inspector. Cadogan Lane is only a 20 minute drive away. We can easily go and check it out. Unfortunately, this might be our only lead. Unless by some miracle Father Brown has prayed for us to find Flambeau. I'll drive, Inspector. With any luck, we might be able to get to the restaurant before it's too crowded. Friday nights are always busy in London. Good evening, sir, and welcome to the Flaming Tree. Have you got a reservation? No. Inspector Valentin, CID, and this is Sergeant Gale. We've had a tip-off about suspicious activity in the area. Could we sit at the bar and observe for a while? Yes, yes, of course. Take all the time you need. Thank you. Sergeant, with me. Let's see if this clue means anything. Excuse me, barman. Pint of uh, lime soda for me and my colleague, please. We are on duty, Gale. Of course. Right. We've been here about half an hour and no sign of anything suspicious. Except the blackboard has been graffitied. The menu is all wrong. A lot of the words are misspelled. The first and last letter of each word has stayed the same, but the rest of it has been altered. Why yes, hard to spot. Most people here are on their phones ordering from those instead. I've not seen a person actually read it since we arrived. I doubt the bartenders would have noticed, especially given it's not that obvious. Excuse me, bartender. Your menu is not correct. The words have been misspelled. Damn! It takes ages to write these things up properly, with the full cursive script and everything. <sighs> Probably those two clergymen from earlier. What two clergymen? Oh, the two clergymen who threw their curry at the wall. Look, over there. <laughs> Luckily they had paid. Can you tell me anything else about them? Oh, they uh, came in roughly an hour ago. 
One of them was quite tall, uh, the other was around average height with a bit more weight. They both came in, ordered their food at the bar and sat at the corner booth. Uh, both of them were very polite. After about a quarter of an hour they received their food. They were having some kind of religious debate from what left of the conversation I heard. Then at once, the short one stood up, picked up his plate and threw half of his lamb biryani straight at the wall. Those curry stains going to be hard to get out of the wallpaper. Anyway, the short one just left, while the tall one took one look at the wall, saw the stairs of the other diners and quickly hurried after the other priest. Did you see which direction they went in? I shouted at them to come back, uh, but by that point they were already walking away at speed down the street and turned right into... Chesham Plaza. Thank you for your assistance. One last thing. How long ago was this? Around half an hour ago, before you'd arrived. Thank you. We've got to run. Oi! Oi! <clears throat> oh! You, you people wouldn't be able to help me find a policeman, would you? My name is Inspector Valentin of Scotland Yard. Have you seen two clergymen run down here? Oh, yeah, that's what I need to complain about. About 20 minutes ago, these two clergymen were walking down the street and stopped at my grocers to admire some of the produce. Can you describe them for us? Yeah, one was reasonably tall and broad, and the other was about average height and a bit fatter. One of them was carrying two packages wrapped in brown paper. It's them. What happened here? Well, as I said, these two clergymen came into the shop here and were browsing the produce for a few minutes. The shorter of them picked up a punnet of strawberries and came to the till. He then gave me half a pony as payment, to which I explained I'd already shut the till and therefore I couldn't give him any change. And he said, Don't worry, it'll pay for the damages. And I said, Well, what damages? Well, the priest just looked at me with an inquisitive look and said, These damages. And at the front of my store, I have this small crate of apples. Well, he picked one up and upturned the box. Half of my supply of apples went rolling down the street causing a right mess. I was so stunned, I didn't know how to react. And by the time I'd worked out what was going on, I was on my knees trying to pick them all up. Meanwhile, the, the shorter one just left the shop and continued his journey. His colleague took one look at the damage he'd caused, and rather than apologise for his colleague's actions, he just took on after him. Hmm. Thank you for your time. We'll do our best to catch him. Yeah, you make sure to warn him. Clergyman or no clergyman, next time I won't be as forgiving if they pull a stunt like that. We will. Which way did they go? I was towards the square. You have to be quick, though. Well, we know they've been here recently, then. That's good. It means we aren't far behind. Now. We need some backup. This is Inspector Valentin, CID. I need a police helicopter in the sky above Belgravia and officers to do street-by-street -street searches of the area. Make sure all officers are aware of who we are looking for and are plain clothed. We know that Flambeau has Father Brown with him and this could turn into a hostage situation if we don't play our cards right. No criminal is more dangerous than when he is cornered. Sergeant? Mm, yes? I still don't understand why Father Brown is making such a nuisance. Tipping over the apple crate? Throwing curry at the wall? Hardly the actions of a man who is being used as a hostage unless... He's trying to get our attention. He's leaving us clues. Why though? Surely he could bring Flambeau to the police station himself or simply make a dash in a public place? Why such an elaborate method? I don't know yet, but clearly the father has a methodology behind it which I intend to follow. Let's get walking. Walking? We could get to the car and probably read them a lot faster. Would make it much easier to chase after them. Normally I'd agree, Sergeant, but we don't know what he's doing or where they are going. If you know what a man's doing, get in front of him. But if you want to guess what he's doing, keep behind him. Stray when he strays. Stop when he stops. 
travel as slowly as he. Then you may see what he saw and may act as he acted. We've just got to keep our eyes peeled for any suspicious activity and hope we catch up to them soon. What kind of suspicious activity are you thinking of, Inspector? Any kind. We will know what we are looking for when we see it. No sign of any priest at the square. Thought we might have seen which direction they'd have gone. Our men have stretched thin over the area. Damn. <coughs> Inspector Valentin speaking. Constable Ravel, Inspector. We've had a report which might interest you. Concerns some clergymen. Summarise for me. Well, one of our officers was patrolling around Wellington Arch and he happened to see an argument taking place. There were two clergymen talking to a street magician. He went to investigate, but the smaller of the two clergymen started running away and the larger one quickly followed. After an interview in the street magician, it seemed that the story went as follows. The two clergymen volunteered to take part in his magic tricks with the expectation that if they beat him at Find the Lady, they would double their money. Seems that the smaller priest lost a few quid trying to beat the street magician, but failed until he resorted to cheating. This caused a bit of an argument with the street magician. He said he needed the money to post his packages. The street magician argued he'd gambled the money. He can't ask for it back. The argument only ended when the priest spotted me and fled. Anything else of note? Nothing specific, Inspector. I didn't make much of it. Though it seems odd that a clergyman would gamble, especially if he needed to spend money somewhere else. Quite. Thank you, Constable. What do you make of this, Sergeant? Not sure, sir. However, there is a post office not far from here. Borders on to Hyde Park, about a quarter of an hour's walk from here. Although it's dark already, they might still be open for a couple of hours. Only one way to find out. Keep units on standby. I want to cut down Flambeau's exit options fast as soon as we even have the slightest hint of where he is. Oh, if you've come about that parcel, I've sent it off already. Parcel? The parcel the priest left for you? Can you explain what happened from the beginning? I'm afraid I don't understand. Well, about 15 minutes ago, these two clergymen walked into the post office. The smaller one bought some sweets and chatted briefly. Seemed a rather affable fellow. The taller one stayed silent for the most part, unless he was spoken to. Did the taller one give a name? No, he didn't. He just said he was a friend of Father Brown. Continue. Then they both went out and crossed the road over to Hyde Park. I didn't think anything of it. A few seconds later, the smaller priest runs back into the shop and says, Have I left a parcel? I looked everywhere and I didn't find one. He seemed unperturbed by this and simply said that if I happened to find it, I should post it to St Paul's Cathedral and if anyone came in after him, I was to tell them that it had been posted. He even left me some money for my troubles, and after he left, I found the parcel and have posted it over to St Paul's. Can you describe the parcel for us, please? Yes, it was a cardboard box wrapped in brown paper. Fairly heavy as well, considering its small size. Hmm. Thank you. You said they had entered the park? Yes, they did. They didn't say where they were going, though. We've got them. Yes, this is Valentin. I want every available officer we have on the exits to Hyde Park. That and get the helicopters up in the air. I want them searching for these two clergymen. Be advised one of them is almost certainly the criminal known as Flambeau, so be careful. We will move in slowly. All units wait on my position. Let's see if we can catch this man once and for all. Gail, with me. We will come from the south of the park, up the main path. Hopefully, by cutting through the middle of the park, we can narrow down the field where they could be. No sign of them yet, Inspector. We've had word from the choppers above that they haven't been spotted, but the tree cover presents complete coverage of the park. Shush! There they are. Over by the tree. Clever hiding spot indeed. What are they talking about, though? The Middle Ages were really not a good time to doubt religion. It was much wider and people believed more freely. There was no science then. Yes, but these days we have atheists who use reason and science when they look up at the universe. People believe in gravity and other scientific constructs but sneer at the idea that a universal being could have come up with it, when sure it must have taken a lot of thought to design the universe. Reason defined by an unreasonable being. No. 
Reason is always reasonable. People have always charged the Catholic Church with lowering people's reason. The persecution of Copernicus and Galileo are good examples of the church telling people that anything they do not understand is God's work. They believe it lowers reason by saying that God is responsible for everything, but it's the other way around. The church provides a framework where God can be bounded by the limits of human reason. But who knows in this infinite universe? The universe may be an infinite construct, but it is far from chaos. The concepts of truth and justice are ones that are universal to any culture on this world, and dare I say, any other world we may find life. What is this priest doing? Does he not know the identity of the man he is sitting with? We don't move in until Father Brown is gone. For now, we sit, wait and listen. Well, I think that any different world may not be as similar to ours as you imagine, Father, depending on their definitions of justice, physical or religious. However, I bow to your esoteric knowledge of religious philosophy. Now hand over the sapphire cross, Father. We're all alone here and I could dispose of your body in many ways so no one would ever find it. For I am Flambeau, thief extraordinaire. Will you give me that cross? Stay until my signal. We can't risk shooting the priest. No, I will not. No, you won't, you insufferable priest. Are you some kind of idiot, or do you believe that God will save you from whatever fate I deal out? <laughs> no matter. You can't give it to me. I've already got it in the box right here. Are you sure about that? You are a proper comedian, aren't you, Father? I am quite sure. I made a duplicate of the original parcel, thanks to you and your lack of materials. It was easier to copy. Brown paper and string. Really? <laughs> no matter. You have the duplicate, and I have the cross. You can bluff all you want, Father. I have the package. I've heard of this tactic before. Duplicate parcels. Swapping them so that the target doesn't realise the item is gone. It's tricky to get right though, isn't it? You have to guess the exact dimensions and weight of the package without ever seeing or holding it. You have heard of it, Father. Not knowledge I would expect from a man of God. I am a big fan of BBC detective shows. That and I have heard it from a parishioner who confessed sins to me. I won't mention his name, but when I saw your package on the train, it occurred to me that someone might try and steal the cross like that. Tube stations are busy places. You began to suspect me? Was this before or after I brought you to a quiet spot in the park, away from CCTV? No, no. I suspected when you first sat down. The bulge in your jacket is well hidden under your religious garments, but it is unmistakably a pistol. Priests do not carry guns, so it was obvious to me that you weren't a real priest. Also, the positioning of the gun in your robes. It's not the best place to put it if you want easy access to it. This suggested to me that you prefer to rely on disguises and wit more than brute force and weapons. This coupled with the religious artifact suggested to me that you were indeed flambeau. How on earth do you know all this information about guns? The flock. You'd be surprised how much priests know about. You learn a lot of information from the people under the seal of confession. Obviously, I'd never talk about it for risk of violating holy orders, but bits and pieces do stay with you. Thus, from that moment, you were a suspect. That's how I know you didn't have the cross. I saw you change the parcels when we sat down at the Indian restaurant. So while the magic tricks were taking place and your eyes were watching the cards, I swapped the parcels back. Then I left the right one behind at the post office. Left? Left it behind? I went back to the post office and asked if I had left a parcel, and gave them a particular address if it turned up. Well, I knew I hadn't, but when I went away again, I left the parcel in a place where the teller could easily find it. So, instead of running after me with that valuable parcel, they have sent it to a friend of mine in St. Paul's, another trick I learnt from a parishioner a few years back. I'm sorry this evening has taken a downward turn for you, Mr. Flambeau. We priests do pick things up. Paper? Sticks of wood? Styrofoam? How? I don't believe it. How did a simple priest like you manage all of that? No, you definitely have the cross on you. If you don't willingly give it up, I will take it by force. No, you won't. Firstly, and most importantly, I don't have it. Secondly, we aren't alone. He knows we're here. Make sure Flambeau doesn't escape. Over there, behind the tree, are some police from Scotland Yard. How they come here, you ask? Why, I brought them, of course. How did I do it? 
I was sure you were a thief, but I did not want to make a serious accusation against a member of the clergy on the off chance I was wrong. So, I made a series of tests for you to check whether you would react and show yourself. Your lack of reaction said it all. Firstly, you are okay with childish pranks like changing the letters on the menu. No clergyman would have approved of some of the words I was writing. Throwing curry against the wall, any normal man would have at least apologised for his friend's outburst. You didn't. Thus, I presumed you wanted to keep quiet for your own reasons and pass through London unnoticed. You didn't react when I tripped over the apple cart, or even when I cheated in the magic trick. These were all things which would have warranted at least a phone call to the church. That led me to the next part. At the Indian restaurant, I checked your bag. No phone. Very rare in this day and age for a man to have no phone at all. I could only presume you didn't want to be traced at all. God willing, I was able to lay some clues for the police. At every place we went to, I took care to do something that would get us talked about for the rest of the day. I didn't do much harm. A splash wall, spilt apples, an angry magician. But I saved the Blue Cross. It is at St. Paul's, as a matter of fact, another part of my trade, too. Made me sure you weren't a priest. What? You attacked reason. It's bad theology. Flambeau, you are under arrest for attempted theft of the Blue Cross as well as a multitude of other crimes. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. <laughs> Fair enough, Inspector. Congratulations on capturing me. Thank you. But my thanks to Father Brown as well. You've done a great service to Scotland Yard. Just doing God's work, Inspector. Gosh, is that the time? Inspector, I don't suppose I could trouble you for a lift to St. Paul's. I might have been a trifle late for my meeting with the Pope. You have been listening to The Blue Cross, a Father Brown story, written and directed by James West. This is based off the original story, The Mystery of the Blue Cross, by G.K. Chesterton. The cast list is as follows. Inspector Valentin is played by Katie Siggs. Sergeant Gale is played by William West. Father Brown is played by Tom Hartley. Flambeau is played by James West. Ticket Seller by Lauren Powdrell. Police officers by Joyce Strassen and Molly Ives. The answering machine and the waiter are played by Alex Gowers. The shopkeeper by James Bennett. The teller by Nicole Wardle. And finally, the reporter is played by Harshman West. Thank you for listening.